Antimicrobial resistance, which is a global health and developmental threat nowadays. Misuse and overuse of antimicrobials are the main drives in the development of drug-resistant pathogens. To have a talk about the antimicrobial resistance and new pandemic, I would like to have Dr. Somi Ektadar over here. She's a diva of Pakistan Society of Internal Medicine, distinguished physician, Kim Kolian, FCPS, FRCP London, and currently serving in the capacity of Associate Professor of Medicine at King Edward Medical University. She is the Founder General Secretary of Pakistan Society of Internal Medicine and remained as Chairperson Dengue Expert Advisory Group. She has so many features in, in, his, in her crown, Governor's Award for Contribution to Health, and Master Trainer of WHO on Dengue and an active member of SIAG. I would like to welcome Dr. Somi Ektadar over here. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Hina, for your very kind introduction. And thank you to the organizing committee of Third Medcong for giving me the opportunity to talk to all of you today. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1914 till 1918, world witnessed its first world war. And about 20 million people, they perished in this war. This was followed by the Second World War, which lasted from 1939 till 1945, and the figures doubled. We lost 40 million precious lives to this world war. And all the time, people are now dreading the third world war. Anywhere in the world, whenever there is an attack or there's cross-border firing across the two countries, we presume that probably this is the start of third world war, because it is estimated that half of the world, or maybe more than that, will be destroyed because of the nuclear powers that will be coming into action in the World War III. But ladies and gentlemen, there is another war that is going on for centuries now. Throughout the history of human mankind, there has been a continuous battle between human beings and the microorganisms that cause infection and disease and lead to loss of precious lives. And then came the great scientist Alexander Fleming, who with the discovery of the penicillin, revolutionized the treatment of infectious diseases. And we saw that there was sharp decline in the number of deaths, deaths attributed to infectious diseases. And the life expectancy was increased because of his marvelous discovery of curing these infectious diseases and winning this war against the microorganisms which were attacking humans continuously. But now the question arises that in this war between humans and infections, are we leading to another war which is originating actually from this antimicrobial and microorganisms interaction? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, another war started. And that war is against these antimicrobials, which are there to help protect the mankind. And this war is known as antimicrobial resistance. My name is Dr. Somia, and I will be talking to you about this invisible silent pandemic, which is going on for the last many centuries around the world and causing deaths all across the globe. World Health Organization has identified antimicrobial resistance as one of the biggest threats to the global health. And according to the World Health Organization, the antibiotic resistance occurs when bacteria change in response to use of these medicines, which are actually there to protect us, but they are unable to do. And over the past few years, because of the overuse of antibiotics, there is emergence of multi-drug resistant bacterial strains which have made them ineffective. So should we wait for 10 million deaths as estimated by the predictive models by year 2050 because of this antimicrobial resistance? Or should we take some timely measures to control it? This is the food of thought for my today's talk. And ladies and gentlemen, Antimicrobial resistance and its impact is much bigger than we think. It is just not that the infections are increasing, it leads to more poverty, it leads to decreased economic growth, and it leads to health inequity, causing our socioeconomic decline. 
Therefore, the effective antibiotics is not only a health issue, it is a social issue. Social issue. It's just not a medical problem, it is a global problem, which is covering our universal health and our economic growth as well. So let's find out how do bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. The resistance is because of the indiscriminate use of the antibiotics, which when act on bacteria in an inappropriate way, they change these bacteria into super bacteria. And because of the natural selection, the resistant bacteria, they increase in their population, and the resistant bacteria then overcome the susceptible bacteria, and there is more and more resistance going on with each year. There are different types of mechanisms by which the antibiotics become resistant. I'm not going into the details, but there can be efflux pump mechanisms. There could be target change in the an antibiotics. There could be breakdown of the enzymes, which enzymatically degrade these antibiotics. Or there could be a biofilm production, which bacteria produce outside their body. It's a, it's a kind of slime in which the bacteria are protected and inside this slime protection, they live and they grow and the antibiotics cannot work on them. And then there are some joker type of bacteria which have all these mechanisms combined and these they give result, they result in the multi-drug resistant which halt all mechanisms which, through which the antibiotics act on these microorganisms. And this leads to the superbug or the multi-drug resistance. And then there is extensive drug resistance, and now we are moving towards pan-drug resistance. The Telegraph in 2017, its headline was that life expectancy has dropped because of antibiotic resistance. So the increase in the life expectancy that we saw with the discovery of the penicillin and was a great news in the medical flow, it became nullified with this antimicrobial resistance and we are now again on the same track of decreased life expectancy, and we are losing our war to these infectious diseases. And the sad part of affairs is that 70% of this antibiotic resistance is ascending in the Asian region to which we belong. And the deaths attributed to AMR every year are increasing day by day, and the highest incidence is seen in the Asian region. In 2015, it was estimated that about 50,000 people lost their lives due to antimicrobial resistance. At present, around 7 million people die every year because of antimicrobial resistance, unable to treat the infections. But it is predicted that by year 2050, 10 million people will lose their precious life due to antimicrobial resistance. And antimicrobial resistance, where it is a global challenge, it is a challenge in Pakistan to a very big extent. And Pakistan is one of those countries where there is a significant global and regional threat of antibiotic resistance and multi-drug resistant and extensive drug resistant strains of different organisms have been reported from different parts of the country. Especially, we hit the news in 2016 with the XDR salmonella, which became the headline of many international media, which showed that there is 100% resistance to fluoroquinolones in salmonella infections. So how is Pakistan working to stop a typhoid superbug? If you see Lahore, Hyderabad, we have still the same issues of safe cleaning water. We have still fighting with TB, typhoid, malaria, and diarrhea. And because of the COVID and misuse of the antibiotics in the viral infection, this is rather escalating rather than we learn from our mistakes and start using the drugs judiciously. Antibiotic resistance in Pakistan has become a major problem. Number of AMR studies from different cities of Pakistan shows that Pakistan is one of those countries in the world with highest incidence of antimicrobial resistance. The global antibiotic consumption has made some guidelines and they have asked us to follow these guidelines if we want to overcome. 
So it was seen that in high income countries, there was a 65% increase in global antibiotic consumptions. It was even higher in low and middle income countries. And in Pakistan alone, there was a 65% increase in the antibiotic consumption. So we are fighting with a tsunami of antibiotic resistance. And this is how Pakistan in 2021 has consumed <clears throat> 120 million birth, billion worth of antibiotics. And the consumption of antibiotics in India and Pakistan has been highest as reported in the world. We are resistant to Staph aureus, to Klebsiella, to Enterococcus, to Proteus. You name the organisms and the antibiotics which we use commonly on these, them, they stop working. So what is the solution? The solution, ladies and gentlemen, is the stewardship. The antimicrobial resistance can be battled by antibiotic stewardship, which is actually the right antibiotic for right patient at right time, right dosage, with the right route and right duration. This is what we all need to practice. We have need to have a diagnostic stewardship. We have to need to have a clinical diagnosis and risk stratification of patient. We need to have microbiological data for planning the management of the patient and implementation of infection control practices and increasing patient awareness at the same time. For the past few years, the discovery of antibiotics has been very limited. And in the past 20 years, only few antibiotics have been developed. And all of these antibiotics, which are called so-called novel antibiotics, are actually the variations of the existing antibiotics. So we all need to work on the newer drug discovery, and we need to start today. So development of rapid diagnostic tests, elimination of growth-promoting antibiotics from animal food, multinational collaboration and resource sharing, and research and development for new therapeutics and implementation of antimicrobial stewardship is the need of the hour. I will end my talk here by saying that knowing is not enough, we must apply. And willing is not enough, we must do it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Somia, for 